Welcome back to the Gotanium Tech Talks. I'm your host, Ashley McGlone, and today is our final Converge sneak peek as we're leading up to our annual user conference, Converge. And today we have some really interesting use cases coming out of the Enforce module and the Comply module that we've not covered on this show before. And I've invited some special guests. We actually have two guests on the show today, normally just one. We have two guests on the show uh, because I, I want to make sure that in this show, you are meeting people inside Tanium and getting a firsthand tour behind the scenes of who are the people that make Tanium work and that make our customers successful. So today, I want to introduce to you Kofi and Joel, who are both experts in these modules of enforce and, and comply. And we're, so we're going to talk about some new features, some new use cases that we're enabling in those modules and how you can get your hands on those at Converge coming up here in the middle of November. So Kofi, why don't you start off and introduce yourself? Cool. Thanks, Ashley. We really do appreciate it. Uh, my name is Kofi S. Riffey. I'm a technical account manager and enforced subject matter expert here at Taney. Um, I've been here about about two years, a little bit over two years. So um, been loving it here, learning a lot and uh, loving what we're doing with, with our, our, our module and getting everybody taken care of. So nice to meet everybody. Yeah, and Kofi and I used to be on the same team. We spent a lot of time yep. together. It's, yep. it's good to be back in the saddle again. And Joel, introduce uh -huh. yourself. Yeah, Ashley, thanks for having me. Um, I'm also a TAM here at Tanium. Uh, I'm actually the Comply Subject Matter Team Lead, uh, and I've been with Tanium now about three years. So pretty excited about uh, Comply and being on the show with you guys. Yeah, thanks. And I was telling Joel just as we were prepping for the show, I don't We've been here so long and, and still not cross paths yet. So I'm glad that we've got a chance to do this show together and tell everybody about the good news, what's happening and comply. So Kofi, let's start with you. Tell us about the use cases that we're addressing in the Converge Lab this year. And, and where does that really connect with our customers? Yeah, for sure. So um, this year we're going to be uh, showing off how to apply granular policies using ADMX templates, right? And then also one of my favorites, uh, purge policies. So it's a type of remediation policy um, that uh, a lot of people have been benefiting from, especially due to this new work from home environment, right? Uh, so that's uh, two, two of the, the policy types that we'll be showing off and uh, I can't wait to, to give you guys a peek. So for those who are uninitiated, ADMX, I know what that means because I worked with uh, your policy for decades, yes. but to help our <laughs> folks understand what are these policies exactly and, and what's the benefit of doing this in Tanium as opposed to Microsoft Group policy? Yeah, for sure. So um, ADMX policies, uh, administrative templates uh, that you would find in, in group policy, right? So um, in most cases, what you would do is have uh, a group policy that you would send down via domain controller and then send it down to your endpoints. And that would allow you to set certain configurations and settings uh, for those endpoints. Um, some of the difficulty that lies there is, once you push it out, how do you verify and validate that it's actually stuck? So that's where we come in is we provide you the ability to not only enable the policy, set those configuration uh, settings, but also report as to whether or not um, those policies have actually stuck on the endpoint. And if not, give you um, some, some insight as to what you can do next to move forward. And that's huge because I, okay, ex-Microsoft employee here. I, I started <laughs> with Active Directory and Group Policy in 1999 on the release candidate. Okay? I've been there, I've done this, okay? And I've, and I've consulted in some of, the, some of the largest Active Directory environments in the United States, okay? So I've, I've been from shop to shop seeing where you've got multiple domains and forests and it's, and it can really become a rat's nest very quickly, a mess uh -huh. to try to manage all these policies. And then there's the non-domain join machines as well. Mm -hmm. So this is really a strong place for Tanium to help customers. Now, you also mentioned this purge and white thing. Um, I, can I can only imagine with work from home that people have seen some devices go missing. Um, uh -huh. Tell us more about that use case. Yeah, so um, in cases that you have an endpoint that doesn't make it back to, to, to the home, to home base, right? Uh, you need, you want to make sure that your data is secure or that users cannot log into that machine. So uh, we have some purge mediation policies um, that can either lock out uh, the user from accessing, from logging into the endpoint, 
or we can actually just force a wipe on that endpoint. So um, that gives you some type of security knowing that your, uh, your information is, is not being um, accessed, um, at least you know, through, through traditional means of logging in to an endpoint. Man, that's really powerful. Uh, and, and I guess in this worst case scenario, right, if you got a device that walks off, uh, you hate to lose the, like the investment in that asset, but even uh-huh. more is the IP, you know, the, the exactly. intellectual property, the business data on that. So show us uh, in the lab here a little bit of what people can expect to see in the lab. Oh, yeah. the so we have our ADMX policies, uh, machine administrative templates. And as you see here, I have two settings that I've uh, modified here with Tanium Enforce. And just as we've pushed those policies down, I can also show you the enforcements. So these are two endpoints that I have in this environment. We can tell you that the status has successfully been applied. In the event that we were to run into an issue, we could also specify and show you the reason why that those policies have not been applied. So at a quick glance, you can see your entire environment uh, via the summary, or if you want to get granular details as to what machines have actually applied the policy and the reasons why they have, they haven't, we give you that information. Um, to to access as well. So that's one of the policy types that we'll be showing uh, in the enforced converged environment. All right, so um, in addition to our ADMX policies, we also have remediation policies. And the policy type that we'll be showing off, I'll actually demo for you today. So we'll start with creating a policy. We'll call this one lab converge, right? We'll select our policy type, which is gonna be a remediation policy for Windows. We'll select next. And a remediation policy allows you to to run a sequence of tasks on an endpoint. Um, For this specific one, we're looking for a purge, delete all non-essential files. So we'll select that here. Hey, uh, Keith, let's let's, let's talk about this for a second. You went by that really quick. I want to call out the different kinds of tasks there. Could you go back? Let me, let me. Because yeah. I'm thinking as somebody who's watching this, thinking, I want to see what are those other kinds of things I can do too. Call, call out those sure. three different purges. Yeah, for sure. So we have three different purge policy types. Um, one is delete all non-essential files. So this will delete everything um, that is not in the TAME directory or the Windows directory. So anything that is, is a system important file or folder, it will keep um, and delete everything else um, that is non-recoverable. And then we have a freeze and lockout policy, right, for purge. And what that does is simply prevents the users from logging in. So in the event that you have a BitLocker enabled on the endpoints, it will actually prevent them from booting the the endpoint without without having a recovery key. And then the second step is it prevents the user from logging in until you hit our final, um, final purge type, which is recover from freeze. So this allows you to say, all right, hey, the endpoints is actually in in a good state right, let's go ahead and recover this machine so that we can know, now get back to using that endpoint. So good, good call out on that, Ashley. But yeah, these are our three purge remediation policy types. And that's, that's really fancy because, I mean, think about it. This device could be anywhere in the world, literally. Uh-huh. I mean, I, I've worked with customers who had devices stolen from, like literally thieves broke in the front door, backed up a truck and took like 30 <laughs> laptops. I mean, this stuff wow. happens, right? Yeah, so yeah. you don't know where that, but as long as it's got an internet connection uh-huh. and our zone servers can reach it and we can uh, remediate these boxes, that's fantastic. That's right. That's right. So um, to show you what it looks like, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll select um, the non-essential files uh, purge remediation policy type. Uh, we'll put in who requested this, which would be me, and then a recovery message. Hey, please return this endpoint to help desk, call one eight 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 eight. There we go. So that's what we're going to call in case we need to, to get this machine back. One of the things to make sure that we don't just target uh, machines uh, uh, willy nilly, right? Is we want to make sure that you know that the machine that you are trying to freeze to delete um, that you have a second set of verification, which is the MAC address. So in this tab right here, I've already grabbed the MAC address from one of these endpoints in the lab. I'll go ahead and copy it and then place that here um, just to have a second set of eyes prior to wiping this machine. So we'll create the policy 
And then once the policy, policy is created, you'll see that it is not applied, right? And that's because we need to select the endpoint one more time to make sure that we want to actually wipe this machine. So we'll go to our enforcements. You'll see there's none here. We'll select our enforcement button on the top right-hand side. We'll give this a nice name, wipe this machine. And then as you'll see here, we have a computer name. So this is how we target our machines. Um, now it's a little bit different for remediation policies, but in most cases you wanna click your policy and then select the machines you want to enforce the policy to. So we'll select this machine because this is the MAC address that we selected earlier. We'll copy that value and we'll paste it here. So it'll look for this machine. Uh, we'll also get a preview if we have a subset of machines to choose from um, in our other targeting types. And then from here, we can select some advanced options. Do you wanna wait for this to start? Do you wanna stop this at a certain time? Uh, stop the application of this policy at a certain time? How often do you want this policy to repeat? And do you wanna distribute this over a subset of, of, of time? So I'll select create, we'll hit yes. And then we'll give it some time. Uh, it usually takes about maximum about 10 minutes, but once the machine is targeted and will uh, target it and the policy gets it down to the endpoint, just like that, you'll have that machine uh, wiped out. So 10, 15 minutes maximum uh, and go from there. So Some that's- playing, Where uh, in the world is Carmen San Diego? She's got my laptop, yeah, yeah. but man, she's not gonna be able to use it anymore. And I like the double <laughs> safety keys on that, right? You gotta have the uh -huh. MAC address, the computer name. So, because this is, team has always shied away from doing destructive actions. Exactly. Scale, right. And so we've tried to put extra safeties on there to make sure you don't shoot yourself in the foot because there's no do over with this. <laughs> you yeah. can't come back. You can't come back. So. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, Kofi, that's fantastic. So uh, our experience at Converge then folks will get a chance to do this because this is probably something you don't want to just play with on your production network. Either, right, right. right. So. <laughs> Definitely want to test it. Correct. All right. So Kofi, thank you for that uh, tease of what's going to happen at Converge in that Enforce Lab. Now I want to pivot over to Joel, who, like he said in his intro, he's a comply leads me. So Joel, tell us a little bit about some of the new capabilities that people will get a chance to do at Converge this year in the lab. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. Last time we were at Converge, Comply was at 2.7 and we are at 2.10 now. So there's a lot of new features uh, that are there. We have a whole new interface and UI. I'm really excited to show folks, you know, some of the new capabilities uh, that we have. All right. Well, tell us what are some of those new capabilities? Yeah, today? absolutely. So one of the things that, you know, we really did in, in our big uh, UI overhaul, and we call this Project Blue Star, is that we took the feedback from our customers who said, hey, look, Comply is a great tool also things that we can do with it from a compliance and vulnerability management standpoint, but we want to make it more intuitive. We want to make it easier to use, right? And that's what Project Blue Star did. And in a second, I'm going to probably pop into the lab here and show you guys some of what that looks like. But we've really taken the approach of making the UI easier uh, to navigate, making it easier to see all of your compliance and vulnerability data across your environment. And we've actually made some really big improvements to export capabilities for comply for that data, as well as assessments. Fantastic. Well, let's drop into the lab and take a look. So this is the new comply 210 uh, interface. And one of the things that we're really excited about here, and I'll start with is the findings view. The findings view is this great, you know, overview page where you can see and, and really dig into the details of all of your compliance and vulnerability findings in the environment. So you'll see here at the top, we've got some great visualizations that's showing us our pass and fail compliance for the various benchmarks that we're using here. So in this case, in our demo environment, you know, we're scanning for our CIS benchmarks for compliance for server 2016 and other operating systems. And with this interface here with findings, we have the ability to really slice and dice the data however it is that we need to see it. We've got some really cool views, um, you know, looking at the operating system so I can see what my compliance percentages are across the various operating systems in my environment. And I can just look at all of my findings here and really get into the detail of what's being looked at in the environment. So this cool new feature here, this is our, our what we call the flyout. The flyout gives you all the details on a particular compliance rule. And you have the same capability for vulnerability where we can go in 
look at any particular finding, whether that be compliance or vulnerability. In Converge, we're going to be focusing more on compliance, but folks will get a chance to really see this new interface and figure out you know, how to really get the most out of the data that we're presenting here. And then our reports view here um, is basically the ability to take all of the findings after you've done your analysis, you've kind of sliced and diced things the way you want it. And if you want to come back to that view later, you can save that right here. And then that's going to become a report, right? So one of the things I'll show you guys here in the, in the report section that's really cool is that you know from here, you can star and favorite your reports. So for me, the ones that I access the most, I just go ahead and switch over and I can see those. And I've got some compliance uh, reports here that I've created. CMMC is, is one here, the um, cybersecurity maturity model. And this is one that, you know, a lot of our customers right now are really interested in being able to see how they kind of measure up against these different uh, industry standards and, and regulatory benchmarks, right? So whether that be NIST or CMMC, we've got you covered. You have the ability to go in and create these kinds of reports. And again, the new interface uh, kind of separates the data from the assessment um, and the reporting. So whereas before it was kind of all you know in one place where you would look at reports and that was everything, uh, you can kind of create your assessments, set them and forget them, and then just be able to consume the data within findings and reports. Well, Joel, I can really tell this is miles ahead from where we were in the past. Uh, this yeah. is, I can tell there's a lot of engineering that's gone into this, and I like the way it's been refactored. It makes a lot more sense when we're looking at the data. And like you said, CMMC and NIST, these different standards, I mean, that's top of mind, and you can get right into those reports. Uh, that's I can just imagine customers uh, when they see this the first time just cheering. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah, the feedback's been amazing. You know, we, we did a, a EA uh, release where we got folks who got in early and to test out 210. And we've been taking that feedback and it's been great to see where we've been going with the product just from getting customers feedback and implementing that into comply. So by looking at the title of your lab from finding it to fixing it, I'm guessing that we're, we're looking at things that are not right in the org. How do we fix those? That's right. So how do you go from looking at all these failed findings uh, in your environment to addressing it? And it was pretty exciting this year. You know, Kofi talked about how the various different policies that Enforce allows us to use to be able to manage our endpoints configuration. We're going to kind of touch on this from a remediation policy standpoint. And I'll show you guys real quick here, just a sneak peek into what the lab environment looks like for Converge. We're actually using one of the remediation policies for Windows here, and we're addressing some of these configuration drift problems that we have in an environment, right? So one of the things that you guys will get to see is how we go from looking at our failed findings, creating custom reporting around that, making a policy enforcement, and then actually watching your endpoints go from failed to pass. Um, it's pretty cool to see that in just a few minutes. Wow. But yeah. I mean, that that's that's IT. That's what we yeah. do. Right. We, we find things and we fix them. And so you absolutely get do that hands on in the lab that converged this year. Yep, absolutely. Uh, one of the things that folks will get a chance to see as well in this process as we do this is with the custom reports, um, being able to do like custom profiles, right? So they're going to be able to do a specific report on this policy audit, which we're mm -hmm. going after. So you'll be able to see this number here go from 42 to a much higher number uh, from a passing standpoint, which is pretty awesome to see and the use cases where you can address this. Well, Kofi and Joel, thank you for not only showing us what people will get to do at Converge, but also just new features that we haven't had a chance yet to talk about on the show. What I'd like to do now is just go to each one of you for some closing thoughts. You know, what are, what are your big takeaways? What do you think is really resonating with customers and what are you most excited about, Kofi? Yeah, definitely. So uh, one of the things uh, that Enforce provides is the ability to, like I said, push policies down and then also report on those policies. Um, and so moving forward, we have a, a community article uh, that was written by our, uh, our uh, product manager that shows you some of these, these new uh, policy types, right? But not only that, um, we have just a, a, a plethora of different configuration settings, like over 5,000 settings that you can modify with Enforce. So that's a, a huge number to, to be able to uh, take control over endpoints. And we're also domain ag agnostic. So that's one big thing that I just can't wait to, to show our customers. That's great. Joel, how about you? Any closing remarks? What do you think is really landing with our customers? 
Yeah, I mean, I think today what we're seeing with our customers is that, you know, the capabilities that we have with Tanium and this amazing platform, we have the ability to provide visibility and control of endpoints that no other mm -hmm. tool can. And seeing what we can do, taking the ability of comply to identify where you have configuration and vulnerability issues in your environment, and then pivoting over to like enforce, right? And we've shown, you know, this capability works for customers regardless of where the endpoints are. Work from home was a big thing with COVID. Mm -hmm. And it's been awesome to see customers be able to take these tools and still be able to manage their endpoints regardless of where they are in the world. So really excited to continue to show that capabilities. That's the Tanium story all yeah. up right there. Control it and get visibility control anywhere in the world, even if you need to go wipe that sneaky device. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Boy, that, that's the ultimate control right there. That's the power <laughs> trip. So we want to be really careful when we fire that one board, Very. right? Yeah, yeah. So thanks, guys, for joining us on the show today. And I know folks are really looking forward to where can they get their hands on this. So at Converge this year, November 16th through the 18th, you can do that. Follow this bit.ly link, bit.ly slash Tanium Converge. We'll take you to the sign-up page. Now, this episode is dropping on October 27th. On October 29th, we are closing registration for the labs. They are, I was saying that they're filling up. A lot of them are already full. Get in now if you're not already in those labs. That is, the registration for the event is free, but there is a, a charge for the labs. And I know you won't be disappointed with those experiences because we've got great guys like Kofi and Joel creating those labs for you. Also, as we look at takeaways for today's show, so what, are we, what did we learn today? So we can apply, not only apply, but report on group policies in the ways that Microsoft's tools cannot do today. And that's really a big value point there. Also, this, these lost devices, how do we uh, make sure that we're not losing and jeopardizing business information there? We can do that remote purge policy. We've got all these fantastic new features in Comply 210 that it's really resonating with our customers because it's their feedback, things they've been asking for for a while. And then finally, you could monitor and report on the drift. Now, when you go to sign up for Converge, you need to make sure you pick your labs. So these are the two lab names that you're looking for today, exploring granular policy enforcements and the remediation purge task feature. That's a mouthful, all right? So that's the first lab that Kofi talked about. And then Joel's lab is going from find to fix with comply and enforce. So look for those when you do your registration at Converge this year. And then finally, you can always interact with us at go at tanium.com or over in the community forums. So thank you for joining us today for this tour of some fantastic features in Enforce and Comply. And I hope you're able to join us at Converge and get your hands on those. So until next time, go Tanium. Mm -hmm.